Do you have numbness and tingling sensations from your palm to your fingers? Do you have pain in your wrist and hand when you pick up things? Have you been dropping objects unintentionally in the same hand? You probably suspect that you have carpal tunnel syndrome or some type of median nerve impingement uh, and that's why you're watching this video. In this video, I'm going to show you all the physical therapy exercises that I found after watching the 17 different YouTube channels. To summarize all the exercises that these doctors, chiropractors, physical therapists, physiotherapists, and even massage therapists have mentioned, I have a list here. There are six general categories of device exercise types that have been mentioned. There's posture slash thoracic spine exercises, shoulder stretches, wrist slash forearm stretches, massage slash soft tissue work, tendon glides, and median nerve exercises. These exercise categories respond to the type of cause for your carpal tunnel symptoms to some extent. Uh, posture slash thoracic spine exercises and shoulder stretches are appropriate for patients whose median nerve are compressed at the level of the shoulder. The remaining four categories are appropriate for patients whose median nerves are compressed at the level of the wrist and hand. It is quite easy to determine if your symptoms come from the shoulder. If you have increased symptoms when you move your shoulder, you probably should try the exercises from the first two categories. There are some patients who have impingements both at the shoulder and at the wrist and hand. For these patients, they will probably benefit from exercises from all six categories. Category 1. Posture slash thoracic spine exercises. Three of the 17 channels recommended posture or thoracic spine exercises. Bob and Brad recommended a type of seated thoracic extension using a chair. ED Rehab recommends a vigorous series of thoracic spine mobilization exercises. And Smash VRX uh, recommended snow angel exercise on the board. Category 2 Shoulder stretches. 8 of the 17 channels recommended some form of shoulder exercise. Uh, Bob and Brad recommended pack stretches and the first rib stretch. Uh, and Rusty Rehab recommended a composite stretch that stretches the wrist flexor, biceps, and the pecs. E3 rehabs half kneeling thoracic windmill stretches both the thoracic spine and the shoulder. And rehab and revive recommended shoulder clocks, which is more of a scapular mobility exercise. Uh, Smash VRX recommends an overhead tricep stretch, shoulder internal rotation stretch, and snow angel, which can be considered a pack stretch as well. Virtual hand care recommends shoulder depression exercise, which is also a type of scapular exercise. Uh, body fix exercise recommends also the first rib stretch. To sum up category 2, both Bob and Brad and body fix exercises recommended first rib stretch. Bob and Brad, Erosti, E3, and Smash VRX all recommend at least one exercise that stretches the pecs. All the other stretches are pretty straightforward except for the first rib stretch. So I'll go into a little detail. First rib stretch. This is also called the first rib mobilization. The idea is that the upper trapezius in the levator scapulae and the scalene muscles of the neck have so much tension that they are elevating the first rib without you telling them to. For most people, if you have a tight upper trapezius, there is a pretty good chance you will have an elevated first rib as well. Uh, what this does is it puts pressure on the nerves and blood vessels in the shoulder area and could lead to impingement of the median nerve. It is a good idea to release the tension of the shoulder muscles first for this condition so you can set up the exercise by warming up the muscles with a heating pad so the muscles can relax, let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes, and after heating up the muscles, you can massage them. You can either massage them by hand or massage them using an electric neck massager. After massaging the muscles for about 5 minutes, you can start with the upper trapezius and leave it or scapulae muscle stretches. Next, do depression of the first rib. You can do it one of two ways. The first way is demonstrated by both Bob and Brad and body fix exercises, which is using a strap or a long towel. Put the strap over the first rib and pull the strap diagonally across your body with both hands. Apply slight pressure into the strap. 
take a deep breath and as you breathe out, try to relax the involved shoulder. I know in the other videos, they move the neck away from the shoulder, but that is really a modified upper trapezius stretch. Take a deep breath again while maintaining the tension in the strap, and exhale, exhale, relax and move the shoulder. And repeat. The second way to do this is my preferred way. Instead of using a strap, I just use my uninvolved hand. I put four fingers together and apply pressure on the first rib. Then, I go through the same breathing process, and each time I exhale, I relax my involved shoulder and continue to put pressure on the first rib with my uninvolved hand. If this is all too complicated, it is a good idea to go to a physical therapist and have the therapist go over this with you. Category 3. Wrist slash Forearm Stretches Eight of the 17 channels recommended wrist and forearm stretches. Three of these eight channels recommended wrist radial and ulnar deviation stretches. My personal opinion on these two stretches is that while they do stress out of the forearm tendons, it's more effective to stretch the flexor and extensors. So if I personally, I never give my patients these two stretches for carpal tunnel syndrome. They aren't bad, but I don't prioritize these. The remaining five channels all recommend some form of wrist flexion and extension stretches, which release the tension on the forearm very effectively. If your symptoms are caused by muscular tension, this could solve the problem. However, if your symptoms are caused by scar tissue in the carpal tunnel or inflammation in the carpal tunnel, these stretches will not be enough. Category 4. Massage or Soft Tissue Work Six of the 17 channels recommended some form of massage or soft tissue work. Two of these six recommended using a tennis or the crossbow to release tension in the wrist and forearm flexors. I would not recommend this because this puts a direct pressure on the median nerve. Bob and Brad recommended using the massage gun to massage the proximal forearm and the lumbar cross of the hand. And this is a good idea because there is a lot of muscle mass in the proximal forearm. And the lumbar cross are pretty fleshy as well. The Rehab and Revive recommended massaging the neck. Z Health Performance recommended mobilizing the skin of the forearm. Uh, my opinion on the skin mobilization is while it's not bad, it's more effective to massage the muscles like the wrist flexor and the lumbricals. Uh, Rachel Richards' massage goes into a lot of detail on how to massage the hand and the forearm, so if you have time, you could check out her video. I'll put it in the description. Category 5 Tendon Glides. Seven of the 17 channels recommended tendon glides. My personal opinion for tendon glides is it could be painful if you have a lot of tension in your wrist flexors and lumbricals because every tendon glide exercise contract at least one type of finger flexor, which go from the fingers to the hand and wrist uh, and the forearm. I generally save this exercise for patients who are rehabilitating from carpal tunnel release surgery. Now this could be a good exercise to teach before a patient goes into carpal tunnel release so they can do it right away coming out of the surgery. Category 6, Median Nerve Exercises 10 of the 17 channels recommend some form of median nerve exercise. Uh, this is the number one recommended exercise for carpal tunnel syndrome that is caused by scar tissue or thickening of the carpal ligaments inside the carpal tunnel. The idea is that the median nerve has trouble sliding through the carpal tunnel due to the decreased space caused by scar tissue. And to improve the symptoms, we try to stretch the nerves back and forth inside the carpal tunnel gently until it frees itself and moves easier. Uh, I'm going to group these median nerve exercises into three subgroups. One is the most commonly demonstrated. Seven of these 10 channels use the same arm movement. When it comes to head movement for this exercise, I want to point out that three of the seven channels here recommended head going away from the involved arm, and four of the seven channels recommended head going toward the involved arm. Uh, the second subgroup of medial nerve exercises focus primarily on the wrist and fingers. Uh, the two channels that only recommend wrist and finger medial nerve uh, exercises are also in the Northwest and Milton Carroll. 
Uh, E3 Rehab also recommended a wrist and thumb only exercise. These exercises are convenient for incorporating overpressure on the thumb because you don't have your arm extended away from your body like in the first subgroup. The last subgroup of medial nerve exercises is variations that are so different from the first two subgroups that I don't know where to put them. One is from Rachel Richards and another one is from Rehab Science. The one from Rachel Richards included uh, abducting the shoulder and extending the elbow just like uh, the first group as well as extending the wrist and fingers but did not supinate the wrist. And her head movement is also different in that instead of side bending her neck, she flexed and extended her neck. Um, the other unique media nerve exercise is from Rehab Science. Uh, it's not quite like any of the others, but still very interesting. The mechanics make sense to me because you are still putting the media nerve on stretch by putting your arm in this position, so it seems like it would do something to help. Lastly, I want to mention that if your wrist is acutely inflamed and swollen, which means that it has burning pain and your palm Palmer wrist is tender to the touch. Uh, any and every movement will hurt, including all the exercises mentioned, and you need to take appropriate measures to decrease that inflammation. You could take a prescribed anti-inflammatory medication, you could ice your wrist with an ice bag for a few minutes, or do a 10 second ice massage with an ice cube. Uh, you could soak your wrist in a warm Epsom salt bath if that works for you, you could try con uh, contrast bath therapy by alternating soaking in warm water and soaking in cold water and repeat. If you find that uh, one doesn't work, you should try another one until you find something that works for you. Please know also that your doctor probably will prescribe your wrist splint and mobilize your wrist. This is to prevent your median nerve from flaring up. You should wear it 24-7 but make sure to take it off every hour or so to move your hand and wrist to stretch. If you don't take it off regularly to move your wrist joint, you will lose range of motion and your blood flow to your hand will decrease and it will slow your recovery because of the decreased blood flow. There are a lot of good exercises that I cover in this video and most of them are pretty straightforward except for the first rib stretch that I mentioned earlier and the median nerve exercises. With regard to medial nerve exercises, I want to make sure to shout out Michelle from Virtual Hand Care. Her video on the progression of medial nerve exercises, step by step from the easy to advanced, is probably my favorite out of the 17 YouTube channels that I sampled. So if you're new to medial nerve glide, make sure to check out her video. There were also two shorts that I kind of sampled but did not make it into the video. One from Dr. Leo M. Rosemarin who brought up the use of contrast bath therapy. He mentioned, uh, quote, five minutes in the hot, two minutes in the cold, end quote. Uh, two minutes in the cold is actually a pretty long time. I put my hand in the cold water for like 10 seconds and it was almost unbearable. So I would just go up to two minutes, but it doesn't have to be exactly two minutes. There was another short by Dr. Michael Rowe that showed a medium nerve glide variation that was, I thought was pretty similar to of the variation that Bob and Brad showed. I did feel like the way he transitioned from pronation to supination was kind of neat, but I didn't feel like it was too different from Bob and Brad's exercise. 